Hey guys, welcome out to the range. I wanted to do a quick reminder to let people know that the pistol standards and the rifle standards that you guys see me using in my videos are actually on my website for free download um, and with corresponding videos that go with them. Um, the pistol standards, the pistol standards are something that I got from Dave Spaulding from Handgun Combatives. The rifle standards are something that I worked up on my own and I showed them to Dave when I went to the Legacy Handgun. Um, Legacy, yeah, I think it was just called Legacy, the Legacy Handgun class last August, I think it was, and showed him these numbers, and he studied them, and he says, yep, yeah, your numbers are spot on. He knows what he's looking at. I worked really hard on these numbers to make this stuff attainable, but not like ridiculously easy, and yet not ridiculously difficult. And, um, oh, I need some more ammo. Um, and so what I have found in running, what I have found in running these is that when it comes to the long gun, because the long gun is easier than handgun for accuracy, and yet more difficult to manipulate than a handgun when it comes to certain administrative tasks, the numbers really, really have to be worked on. And that's reflected in these numbers here. So I hope you guys will go to the website and download these and enjoy working with them. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email. Um, please watch the corresponding videos because I explain this stuff ad nauseum so that you understand what goes into everything. But I'm going to run them for you today with my PDW, which is something you guys haven't seen very often. Um, uh, this is a specialty use weapon. Uh, mostly it's for extreme CQC and vehicle ops. Um, I was, years ago, I was doing a lot, a lot of vehicle training. And um, I would go to classes because back then I was building rifles, I would go to classes with a Mark 18 because I kind of needed to promote the Mark 18, and yet I found myself reaching for my GS-17 and running the class with that because I love how this thing does cleanly all the way out to 25 yards. It just gets the job done. Like you look where you want the shot to go, and the shot, the, the bullet just shows up where you're looking. It's just that clean of a weapon to work with. Even though this is a 12 MOA uh, triangle, an RMR 08G, um, it's got a 12 MOA, 12 MOA triangle in it, still, from roughly 25 yards out there, it's still inside the confines of the head. I mean, it's bottom of the triangle, top of the triangle. It's just a really nice optic to work with. So what you're dealing with is, I can look at this guy, and anywhere inside of that triangle is where that shot's gonna, well, let me put it this way. I can put the triangle on the head, and anywhere inside of that triangle, yeah, I did say it correctly, is where the bullet is going to show up, is where the hit is going to show up. So all you're doing is getting a flash sight picture and taking your shot. And yet when you're talking close up work, this thing acts like more of a dot than, than a triangle. This one, the RMR um, 04, which is an amber dot, um, it's, a, it's a circle. And it is so, such a pleasure to work with this optic because it runs off sunlight and I've got it taped off from one end to the other and only the edges of it are left exposed and it is still just as bright as any red dot as any battery operated red dot so this is something to think about if you guys are interested in getting to fiber, op fiber optics driven optics for your weapons but let's get this thing loaded up and we'll run some drills with it alright guys what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with the ready position fire one shot um, and it is going to be in one second. All right, we're going to begin with ready position, fire one shot, and ready position for this weapon is here, and right there is pointing at the ground just in front of his feet. So here, all I have to do is snap up and look at his face and immediately take a hit. Um, someone's going to ask, am I going to get hit in the face shooting this thing compressed? You guys have already seen that I don't. Um, let me show you really quick. That's maximum travel of the, of the slide. And I'd have to go like that to touch it. I'm back here. And I guess I should answer the question. Yeah, if you do that, it extends the stock. But I prefer this weapon not here because there's a lot of that. I prefer it here because then it's elbows to the chest wall. So you have one, two, three, um, four, five, six, elbow, elbow. You have six points of contact with this PDW, which gives you a lot of control over it. There's a reason I like this weapon a lot. Point eight one. Point 
0.84. You know what's interesting about those numbers is they're not too dissimilar to the numbers that you would get with a handgun. Um, this is 10 yards, so I'm not going to try it with a handgun because the distance does skew the accuracy. But with handgun, it'd be 7 yards, and the times are almost identical. They're like 0.7s, 0.8s. If you're really dragging your feet, 0.9s. But with, with this being a long gun in a slightly longer distance, the times are almost identical between handgun and rifle. Ready position, fire four shots. Two seconds. One nine three. One seven eight. Oh, I don't have enough. All right. So at least I made the times. In fact, I made the desired time, which is one nine five. I already made. Required time is 2-0, so let's move on. Hanging, fire, one shot. Okay, uh, let's put one shot in it. Hanging, fire, one shot in two seconds. Hanging, by the way, means this. It doesn't mean, um, it doesn't mean this out of me. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean this. It means the way the weapon would hang if you were just carrying the weapon. And it also means the way you would be standing if you were just carrying the weapon. This is where the Tier 1 Citizen Sling comes in handy because the requirement for this is your weapon actually needs to be stored in whatever storage position it is, which for most people who know what they're doing is their, their long gun is going to be off to the side and it's going to be stored up tight. Guys end up finding that they have to bring the rifle up and they have to come out with their support arm to control it because they have to create slack. With my slings, all you do is bring the weapon up and all the slack you need is actually in the sling itself because of the bungee. Um, that makes a big difference. It also makes a big difference when you're carrying the gun. All right, hanging, fire one shot, two seconds. So I'm gonna put the weapon off to the side and I'm gonna stand normally. One, eight, four. I'll tell you guys, doing that feels kind of wild and wooly because there's not much girth here. So when you go to bring it up, the weapon goes, it just wants to bounce out of your hands because it's so small. Yep. Look where my thumb ended up. One, nine, four. All right, let's run it one more time. That's actually below, oh, no, I'm sorry. Desired time is one, six, oh, okay. I've done this so much with a rifle, with an AR-15, that I'm finding myself instinctively reaching for a safety that isn't there because this is a Glock. All right, so 174, let's move on. On target, empty chamber, tap rack bang. On target means pointing at the target, finger on the trigger, slack pulled out. Two two eight. Uh, desired was 220 and required is 240, so I've made the required. Let's do that again. For those who think that I need to create more slack in my sling, nope, I want this weapon tight to my body because a lot of what I'm doing here is manipulation of the weapon. This is the 27 rounded, which is what's normally in this weapon. If I can't solve the problem in 27 rounds, not to mention this is the Glock, which means it's going to fire. This weapon and I have been through a lot of training together, a lot of very scuzzy muddy, dirty training, and this weapon always works. This whole thing is nickel boron coated inside and out, so it is very slick. Without oil, but I keep it oiled, because why wouldn't you? <laughs> 211. So definitely made required time of 220. Definitely made, I'm sorry, definitely made desired time of 220 and required time of 240. Move on, on target, fire one shot, emergency reload, fire one shot. That's a booger. Three, four, nine. That's a booger. Might be getting the mag out of my pocket. I'm not sure. Huh. Because the mag is back here. There's no way I would attempt to do this with one of these mags. Because to get a mag, you have to come off clear to get a mag out. And then you have to orient the mag properly to get it into the gun. So the reason I'm wearing this 
is just to wear the thing, to get used to wearing it from time to time. We're entering the hot part of the year, and this type of thing makes you sweat. And by the way, let me answer the quick question that I know someone's gonna ask. Ooh, where can I get that chest rig? You can't. This is a chest rig that I designed. Um, I'll give you the short version. I designed this, paid someone to give me the proof of concept. He didn't even fully get what I wanted. Um, he tried to steal the design. That There's no other way to put it. He tried stealing the design. Uh, we got into a pissing match. I won. But I lost because I lost my producer. So if you make nylon gear, let me know. Let's talk about this design. And, uh, and I'll order a bunch of them from you so we can do business because a lot of people keep asking for this chest rig. It's specifically this is designed for this weapon, specifically for PDWs. Okay. On target, fire one shot, emergency reload, fire one shot, three, two, five. Let's go. It's interesting working in a very compressed environment right here. I know that it probably would be better here, but I really don't like this weapon out here. I prefer it right there. I hope you're noticing as you're watching how I work with this thing. This is the most delicious setup ever. I love this setup. By the way, that was 348. So yeah, slightly over on the time. It's funny because you can stay on target the entire way through. All right, one more time. Let's give it a try. <laughs> 330. All right, let's move on. All right, what is it? On target, stovepipe, pull trigger, clear rifle, fire one shot, three seconds flat. So on target, stovepipe, pull trigger, clear rifle, fire one shot. Three seconds flat. There is your stove pipe right there. There's your loaded mag. Three seconds flat. On target, stove pipe, pull trigger, clear rifle, fire one shot. So basically it's you pull the trigger, you get a dead trigger. You go tap, rack, fire. And yeah, this adds a bit of a complexity to it, but I don't care because what do we do with weapons more than anything else? We carry them. We don't shoot with them, we carry them. This controls the length of the weapon. That's why two point is the better choice. Um, you know, I've been a single point sling guy forever and when I started making two points and I made my two points act like single points with the bungee, I went, two point, it just works. Two, zero, four. Yeah, so de desired was two, six, oh, required was three, oh. So definitely made the time frame. Let's set it up once again. And then, if I make the time, we will rock on. So once again, casing, introduce it, you push back, and let, oh, oh, oh. you push back without racking up with your, with your uh, slide catch. So push back, go forward, let it make contact, loaded mag goes in, make sure it's seated, you're ready to go. Two, one, two. Yeah, so let's move on. Okay, on target, double feed, pull trigger, clear rifle, fire one shot. Okay, I'm gonna do this one time because I really hate boogering up rounds. And this is 775. Here's how you do this. Empty chamber, I'm sorry, empty casing. Empty casing goes in the chamber, and then loaded mag goes in, and then the slide is rested against the mag, and the reason you want this is, this simulates a fatigued extractor, which I've actually had. A fatigued extractor that has skipped off the rim of the casing, has recoiled to the rear, but didn't take the empty casing with it, and now the next round has stripped up and out of the mag and has tried to go in the chamber, and now it has locked into the empty casing that's sitting in the chamber, and your mag won't drop free. So the way this is dealt with is, the first thing is you have to discover it, which is why this is 7.75 seconds. So you have to, you're on target, you pull the trigger, you realize you have a dead trigger, so you tap, rack, and you get ticka, ticka, ticka. So now you know this is not just empty chamber or anything else. So now it's forcefully extract the mag, retain the mag, invert the weapon, 
rack the weapon to the rear, let, let gravity do its job, forward, um, and actually, I'm sorry, for this one it's rack, rack, upright the weapon, mag back in, rack the weapon, fire your shot. Let's see if I can actually execute all that in 775. Six six five. So I made the desired of seven two five and the required of seven seven five. Let's do it again. And you know the funny thing is, for me that felt like for you guys it was like dang. Okay, maybe not dang, but certainly not slow mo. Six four one. All right, so there you go. Rifle drills from 10 yards um, with a GS-17 PDW. Love this weapon. Um, let me answer some of the questions that I know are gonna be in the comment section. Yes, this is a Glock 17 with a stock and a forward grip. This is a registered SBR, I registered it years ago. I used to be a special occupational tax holder. SOT, um, FFL 07, SOT2, which means Firearm, uh, federal firearms license manufacturer, which is what the 07 is about, and then special occupational tax holder, 02, of NFA weapons. So I can manufacture SBR suppressors, machine guns, blah, 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 blah. The reason I no longer have the SOT is I don't care about machine guns. I like SBRs. Now that AR-15 pistols have gone in the trash can, I might get my SOT back. I don't know. It's $500 every July. Yeah, it's kind of pricey. Um, but anyways, this is a registered SBR. My name is etched underneath the grip on the actual, um, on this portion right here. I've etched Abner Miranda, and then where I used to live, the town is on this side. And, um, and I used an etching tool and etched it right into the polymer itself. Um, so yeah, uh, GLR-17 and FGGKS are the two pieces that I'm using here. This has an extendable piece to it. It contracts and then you can fold it up and you can click it back to completely occlude the trigger so there's zero access to the trigger. So here the weapon is on safe. Um, but with this being a Glock, even a nice Zev trigger like this one, the Zev V4, you're not going to have just a casual discharge of the weapon. I mean you're going to have to work at pulling this trigger but still for safety's sake I just lock it back. Dynamite uh, setup um, like you guys saw me say earlier or maybe it was another video but basically you have one two three four five six points of contact with this weapon and it gives you a level of control that is astonishing truly this is a pleasure to work with so if you guys think you might want to go into this direction um, the nice thing is there are there's a kpos there's a micro ronnie there is the um, Recovery 2020. Um, th those are all viable options. Um, a 25 yard PDW, guys, 25 yards, 75 feet. That's a really long shot. That's a really long anything. Um, most handgun fights, most long gun fights are within 10, 15 feet. So this is a viable option. And I said this a while back, things are gonna get bad enough in this country that this is gonna get to the point where Law is out the door. I'll leave it there. As always, I thank you guys for watching. I thank you guys for your support of this channel with your donations and your sling purchases. I thank you for being here and watching this video. As always, God bless you all. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one.